joining us now on Empty the Bench. This is an exciting. Uh, this is an exciting moment, guys. Joining us are two of the top prospects in the New York Yankee system. We have shortstop Anthony Volpe, catcher at Austin Wells of the Somerset Patriots. They play on the New York Yankees Double A team. Uh, Anthony and Austin, thank you so much for joining Empty the Bench this week. Thanks for having us. So, guys, before we get into all the news with this season, let's talk about how we got here. So, what inspired you both to play baseball? Uh, Anthony, you, you want to start, and then Austin, you can follow behind. Yeah, I think my first memories in general have been with baseball. My my family, um, they never really played themselves, but they're always huge fans. And it was just something that, since I first had memories, I always had a passion for and I love to play. So it was always super fun for me back then, and it's still fun for me now. So um, it's it's uh, exciting. Uh, I couldn't hear the question. I broke up. What was it? Uh, what inspired you to play baseball? Oh, I mean, just growing up, playing with my dad, playing with my brothers. Um, it just was one of the sports that I was just most competitive with and just learned to love. And um, I just continued to do it throughout me being young and fell in love with it, really. So, Anthony, you grew up in New Jersey. Uh, I believe, Austin, you grew up and uh, you were born and raised in Nevada. What team did you guys follow when you were younger? Ask Austin this question. Uh, I followed Austin. the Red Sox when I was younger. Oh. <laughs> Ow, that hurts. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I followed the Yankees. <laughs> so, I, would, I would hope so, being a Jersey boy, you would either follow Yankees or Mets. But... So as a <laughs> corollary, I, I do need to ask the both of you, well, who's your favorite MLB player bro- uh, growing up? Uh, my favorite player, I think, was Big Poppy. So, <laughs> mine was uh Derek Jeter. Jeter, yeah, I was a I was a Jeter boy myself. I always loved that. <laughs> growing up. Yeah. Growing up, I always loved uh, seeing his uh his influence on everything. We're based in New York, we all kind of were Jeter boys. Well, yeah. Uh, so obviously the MLB draft was this. Is this you know? big deal because it's that first step towards getting to that mission of being in the bigs in our case playing in the Bronx and what uh was your reactions guys to being drafted by the Yankees what was your reaction when you got to hear your name called in 2019 and 2020 respectively um so in 2020 I mean they they had the video camera at the house so I mean, mm-hmm. you could see our reaction online, and it was we were all just like ecstatic out of our minds. Um, it was really just amazing, and knowing that I was going to be going to the best organization in baseball um, just was very just exciting because the fact that they had drafted me with their first pick, it was like this big like confidence that they really wanted me to succeed too. So it was uh, very exciting. Yeah, my experience was definitely similar. It was an awesome night to look back on, to share with friends and family, and to for a lot of people that I really cared about to be there for probably one of the biggest moments in my life up to that point. But obviously for it to be the Yankees and to just have an opportunity, that's what I felt like. I just wanted – I felt like it was the opportunity of a lifetime to just take advantage and get my foot in the door. So um, – it was a great first step, but at the same time, it was it was the first step. And there's a lot of hard, hard work to get there. And then there's just as much, if not 10 times more, to um, once you're in it. So um, it was an awesome opportunity and one that was pretty surreal and kind of felt like a, a dream come true. So we know as baseball players, it's a grind. You guys work every single day to perfect your craft. What are you guys doing on your off days? I'm curious. Like, do you golf? Do you do any other type of things? What do you guys do on your off day? Yeah, we golf. Yeah, we golf pretty much every off day. Sometimes on game days when we have the DH day or something going on. So we like to play golf a lot. Nice, nice. Uh, Speaking of off day. What about, I know with you guys have to have some regimen, you guys have to keep your bodies safe, but when you get the opportunity to 
have something special like a dessert or a special like cheat day kind of meal what what is your guys uh, go to for that stuff <laughs> ice cream <laughs> I feel like I have a cheat day every day, so <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, it can, it's it's any anything sweet, anything that's gonna fill me up. So being I feel like being out at the field all day, you just need as many calories as possible. So <laughs> whatever can fill that void, and as long as it tastes good. Oh yes. So since the media likes to compare a lot of position player prospects to others, especially ones in the majors. Who do you guys think you play like? Uh, I don't really – I don't know if I feel like I play like anybody. Um, like growing up, I never like tried to model my game really after anybody. So, I mean, I feel like it's just like – for me at least, it was like I didn't want to compare myself um, just because I felt like I could it would maybe limit myself. So I wanted to just give myself the highest possible ceiling I could and not compare it to really any player. I mean, I don't feel like I – play like one person i've like just like a bunch of different things that are different than everybody so um i don't know i I don't know if there's necessarily um one person or or anything like that i think um i've gotten to watch but also play with a lot of really incredible players and um you obviously try and pick their brains and see what makes them so successful but i think when it comes to yourself it's just culmination of all those things all the players you've played with, all the great coaches that I've had that have really helped me become the player that I am and are still helping me develop and become even better. So um, I guess it's definitely fun for the media to compare, but for us, we're just trying to be the best players we can be. So, Anthony, obviously the trade deadline, I'm sure you've heard many rumors and many speculation about your name being floated around, obviously not getting traded, but did the thought of potentially being traded – at this past trade line, especially if the Yankees were looking at a Soto or an Otani, what what crossed your mind during the trade deadline rumor? Um, I don't know. I, for me, it was kind of like my second year in it, and I have a really good um, support system with my family and friends and um, the people who kind of not shield me, but they, they tell me what's kind of real and what's not and both years they just told me to shut off my phone and if anything came up they let me know so it honestly wasn't too stressful for me only just because I was around friends and just playing every day that was kind of the best part about it was we had a job to do every night and we were competing to win every night so when you have a clubhouse of as close as we are and everyone's just in the present moment you kind of can you be able to tell if guys were kind of checked out and worrying about stuff that really, really we have no control over. So um, it wasn't, it, I guess I'm kind of different in the fact that I super had no control over it. So I wasn't really too worried about it. So Austin, uh, so can you talk a little bit about your relationship with some of the pitchers? I mean, do you feel you have a good chemistry with them in terms of calling pitches? Yeah, I think that's kind of like the biggest part of catching is just knowing your pitcher. And um, I think just being able to catch these guys during spring training and catching a lot of the guys last year, um, I think it it just really made the transition to get up here really easy. Um, I think we've like kind of just gotten to a good rhythm, like right after the first time. And and I think that just being, just having that relationship and the comfortability between the pitcher and the catcher helps the game move along quicker and just – smoother and, and, and less hiccups, especially with the clock now. You kind of have to be on the same oh, page. Yeah. And um, I think that so far it's been it's been great. And just each and every time I catch an, 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 a guy again, it's always better. Um, it's always better time and always more smoother. So. so you guys, we often hear of talking about prospects and top prospects and the title, sometimes the pressure that will come to it in terms of getting you guys performing in the minors, getting you guys up to the bigs. Do you feel sometimes the pressure will worry you? Does the pressure of being a top prospect worry you at times, or is it something you don't think tend to think about? Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily think of it that much just because while it's nice for people on the outside to consider you a top prospect, 
it's not something that I necessarily ever work towards. I work towards being on the Yankees and helping them win World Series. And I just feel like there's a long way to go for me to get to that place and get to where I want to go. So um, regardless of what anyone thinks on the outside, the work never really stops. And there's a long way to go for not just me, but every single guy on our team, because that's everyone's goal. No one's goal is to just be a top prospect. And um, like I said, it's definitely nice and an honor to be recognized. But at the end of the day, um, it's not really what I work for work towards I don't want to just be considered a top prospect yeah I agree with Anthony um I mean if any like if, if anything there's no pressure it's just higher expectations and I think that's just a, a great addition to going out there to play every day with high expectations I mean I know we both have very very high expectations for ourselves each time we step on the field so um I'd rather I'd rather prove to myself that I can handle expectations and and do more than that. And I think that just having that label of a, of a prospect just creates even more expectation for people on the outside. So um, I'd rather be on the end of like over exceeding expectations than under exceeding expectations. So yeah. I think uh, I think it adds that. So even though we can't look too far ahead. Do you think you're ready for what to expect in the majors in New York? Uh, I'm sure you've heard about it, how tough it can be. What are your guys' expectations for going to the majors? Um, I think it's super exciting. It's something that I grew up obviously dreaming about and, and working for. So I think we're obviously super far but super close at the same time. It's kind of weird to think about, but you obviously never know until you're in it, but I just feel like honestly kind of playing so close to the kind of getting a little table like the and everything like that. You can but Austin and I train and the guys on the team, they're no one that'll work harder and we won't have any regrets once we go up there just because we'll know that there won't be anyone that works as hard as us to be successful and help the team win. Yeah, I I mean, just being able to be close to New York here, playing here, I mean, you can feel like the just the thought of it and how close it really is. But in the end, I mean, it's hard to like know what to expect when you haven't really uh, been in that spot yet. So I think it's going to be a very exciting experience um, whenever it does happen. And um, I know that each and every day, like, the only thing we can control is playing hard and, and giving it our best. So there's not like it, it, it could be 10 years from now. It could be a year from now. So um, we don't have a lot of control over that. We, the only thing we control is how hard we play every day and the preparation we put in. So um, I know that there's a ton of guys, all, all the guys on, on all the teams are, are just working for the same goal. So we have really good organization, really good coaches that help us push each other. Um, just to be the best play each and every day. So I think we're we are being uh, well prepared to handle whatever just comes our way when we make it up there. And Anthony, so during my research, I noticed that you were uh, teammates at one point with Jack Leiter. Now, how cool would it be this idea of you at the bat, you at the plate at that, taking on Jack Leiter, who is on the mound in in a major league setting? Yeah, I think it'd be awesome. Um, I've probably faced him over a hundred times up to this point. And um, I always tell people he's probably the best pitcher I've ever faced just because each time we ever face each other, it feels like he gets better and better and better. So um, I can be his biggest, I'm probably his biggest fan, but at the same time, I think it'd be incredible to face him in the big, we kind of looked at it and we'll never play each other in the minor league. So I think it'd be awesome to face him in the bigs. So, Austin, I do need to ask this question. So, um, New York Yankee catchers, I mean, there's a long line in, in that hallowed hall. You get Yogi Berra, you have Jorge Posada, you have Thurman Munson. I do need to ask, though, who who do you, who was a catcher that you uh, that you feel like, wow, this wow, this guy's good? Growing up. Growing um, up, yeah. I mean, I always, like, 
was just like enamored with like Salvador Perez. Um, and, uh, I think he's just a great player. Um, just all around and I mean he hits really well so I mean he was like kind of the hot new player when I was younger growing up watching baseball so um, I mean it was great seeing him and um, I think yeah he's just one of the guys that I watched I mean there's obviously y Yadier Molina I mean he's been around forever and he is great so I mean I, I, I think I was just too young really to really watch um, like Jorge Posada catch for the Yankees and and so I never really was like seeing things that he was doing. And I was really just remember watching like guys like in the newer age who really like have caught every day for these, new, these teams and stuff. And now I feel old as hell. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, guys, final question. And we appreciate uh, you giving us the time to talk. Um, who is somebody on the Somerset Patriots that we should be looking at that no one is talking about right now? Well, I mean, the good thing about media is they talk about everybody, but um, I think, I mean, Jesus Bastidas, he's having a great year. Um, he's not technically a top prospect on the, on the media, but he is playing like a top prospect, and I think um, he's going to have a really, really great career, um, whether it's with the Yankees or someone else. So I think that's definitely someone who needs some more talking about for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely agree about Cetus. But, I, I mean, all our players. Um, people should come out and watch it within driving distance. I think we have stud regardless of where you go. I mean, we have Dunham up here with us, Lockridge. Like, like Wellesie said, Bastidas. Chaparro just got back up with us. But I could pretty much go through the whole lineup. But. Um, Max Burke, Blake Perkins. There, there's, there's a lot of guys, but I, I just think that there's a lot of impact major leaguers that are playing up and down the organization for us. So um, I think a lot of people should definitely try and go out and watch, watch as much as they can. Hey yeah. guys, uh, guys, we really appreciate uh, coming on with us. Uh, Anthony Volpe, Austin Wells, top prospects in the Yankee organization. Uh, guys, good luck in the future and. Uh, we can't wait to see uh, what goes on with you in your career, okay? Can't wait Thank to see you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs>